GKFX Prime presents the Market Analysis Webinar. Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of our weekly webinar where we'll cover the biggest moves in some of the major markets out there. If this is your first time joining, welcome aboard. Just so you know, generally the way we do this is that we cover the major asset classes. So we typically start with Forex, and so we'll cover the Euro dollar, we'll cover the British pound, we'll cover the uh, Japanese yen, we'll cover the Australian dollar, uh, we'll also cover commodities, so we'll cover gold and crude oil, and we'll also cover the Bitco uh, Bitcoin through uh, as, as the cryptocurrency market, and we'll also cover the stock market with the S&P 500. Okay, so without further ado, let's have a look at some of these charts. And of course, I forgot to mention, if you do have any comments on the analysis that we've done here, or if there's something extra you'd like to see in next week's webinar, please drop us a comment and we'd be happy to comment back, give you a thumbs up, and of course any thumbs ups you can give give to us, they're all much appreciated. It helps more people see the video. So let's look have a look at the Euro, and <laughs> it's kind of Groundhog Day here, guys. Um, this currency pair has been in a range for quite a while now. Last week we were talking about the the breakthrough, the top of the mid of the range, uh, and we were, uh, and I had this line. This is unchanged from last week, and now we're at this line. So we had the push up, and I basically said that. Um, for the time being, uh, you know, I said that things look are starting to look more positive for the euro, but for the time being, the range is still in place, and actually, the high probability trades are to sell the top of the range and buy the bottom of the range. And of course, we have come down with another fail fail break at the 110 level uh, down to the middle of the range, and we find ourselves back at that line I'd previously drawn, and we've and we've actually found a bit of support there. Um, not surprising because it was previously resistance. So we are a bit of a, um, you know, I would use this line right here, which is basically 108.85 um, is the current price. Uh, 108.80 is kind of the the uh, the line I've got here. It's a line in the sand because if we are able to kind of rally up through here with some decent upside, it does really increase the chance that we can finally get that upside break through 110. If we drift down to the bottom of the range again after so many tests, I think the assumption's got to be that the breakout actually is going to be to the downside. Maybe only as far as 106.50 for a retest of that big longer term low, um, but nonetheless a, a downside break rather than upside break. So um, very much hinges on how we handle this uh, 108.80 level. Uh, and, and thus, I would say this is actually a, not a bad risk to reward area. I typically say that actually trading in the middle of the range is a bad idea, um, but from, from this point of view, actually I think that um, potentially this is an area where the market has to choose whether it's going to take off to the upside or not. Um, as a bit of background info, I can't remember if we discussed this last week, but the I don't think we, well, yes, we probably did, that um, France and Germany came up with the idea of um, an EU recovery fund worth 500 billion euros. Uh, but the key thing there is that it would involve giving grants to the countries that need the most help due to the virus outbreak, um, and it would be grants, so that's basically money giveaways instead of loans. Uh, and so loans, obviously, you're encouraged to pay the loan back. A grant, you just get to keep the money, uh, and then it all gets paid back eventually via the EU budget. So this is a bit of a change for Europe. Uh, um, takes away a bit of individual responsibility, if you like, from the nation states and places that responsibility on the, the EU as a whole. So moving on to the British pound. Now, obviously we, uh, we've we had this the bottom of our range in place here for a while. We saw the break of the range last week. Um, I said that the default situation here would be that I would expect this form of support to hold as resistance, and it has. And um, we've basically drifted down underneath the 
20 period moving average on this four hour chart, um, which doesn't always happen, but it just so happens on this occasion, it worked well as a gauge for the kind of speed of the market. Um, but what I said last time is actually that I wouldn't be surprised if we uh, eventually pushed through into the top of the range again. Now we did temporarily here, although we eventually rolled down with the direction of the trend. But what I'm starting to feel here is that um, while the euro is potentially looking at that, you remember the euro is more like in the middle of the price range and looking for that top side break, my inclination is to think that maybe the pound would go in the same direction against the dollar. Uh, and so clearly that is counter trend. But if you look at the, uh, just the, the way these moves are characterized, you've um, got it you've got it in general in trading uh, if you're trading in a discretionary method so you're not just trading the advice of some robot or something uh, if you're trading based on your own decisions you've got to get a feel for the market and to me this feels like a, an impulsive up move where the momentum is is on the upside this slow drift lower feels like there really isn't much momentum here um, on the bearish side uh, and now of course we can suddenly get a jolt of bearish momentum and that changes everything. But my feeling at the moment is that actually it seems like the energy is actually with the bulls. And this is just a corrective before we get another push to the top side. Now how far? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. But it would take us back inside this trading range and I would be inclined to think 124.50 up near this previous peak uh, would be a temptation uh, if we fail to get this big material downside break. Um, so uh, how do you go about that? Well, w always with trading, uh, you want to measure up the risk reward. What I did here with this little rectangle is what's, uh, what's good in MT4 is you can see, uh, you see that um, figure on the side there, the 500, the 400, 400, 500, 600. That's the number of pips, obviously not 600 pips, it's 60, 66 pips at the moment. So here, this is how you judge your, your, your risk. So if you're assuming that when the price falls below that low by some sensible distance, that this trade is a wash, um, that uh, the price is probably not going to carry on moving higher because it's made a new low, then you make the assumption that actually, uh, uh, so if it moves below that new low, then okay, it's a downtrend still. So then our, our trade is a wash but you can take a certain risk above this level um, on the basis that actually we're going to see a higher low and a push to the top side. Um, so this would be 50 pips. Where we find ourselves at the moment is about 100 pips, so 100 pips above the low. So you, you choose your risk. Um, you know, if you if you think that maybe the market can move higher from, from here without making new lows under here, then uh, you determine your risk level and that determines your buy-in point uh, from there and then you're setting your uh, your potential reward. So I've suggested 124.50 is a potential resistance if we fail to make this big down move. Uh, but of course 123 and near these previous peaks, any of these previous peaks up here, 124 even as a round number, you know, these are the kinds of areas you, you look to choose your reward take a minimum risk in relation to that possible reward and uh, in theory that's how trading works minimize the the risks uh, and maximize the rewards as, as much as you can while being realistic of course okay enough chat there let's move into the, uh, the dollar yen this is interesting um, in that we had the downside trend line break we came back tested the trend line pretty nicely so this was actually a decent trade we had a, the, the breakout to the top side here's a good example again where of course the trend was lower but you had that big impulsive move to the top side and so the break of the trend line impulsive move to the top side it felt like the market strength had shifted to the bulls we got the uh the move low which was not a completely wimpish move lower but not quite with the same pace as the upside but stalled out about 50 percent retracement and we've rallied up and if you just had somehow bought in at the trend line and sold out near the old high then obviously that was a decent trend and we, we've stalled out since then and you can see what's interesting here is that this is the previous peak and we just haven't made much headway beyond it we hit 108 stalled back uh, and then stalled at this same line again and here we are finding ourselves at this again this 107.70 roughly um, 
And so, again, here with this 107.70, where we roughly are at the moment, to me also feels like a bit of a line in the sand, um, as does the, uh, the the support I've got in here at uh, 107.40. So we're trading in this kind of tight range in here. Um, if we drop through this support, to me it feels like this this whole upside move has basically petered out at 108 and we're rolling over to the downside again. And so should 107.40 give way, to me it feels like we're heading down from, you know, I don't know how many times we can retest this trend line, but it by the time you extend it out here, any kind of pullback here is going to pretty much take you towards this prior low. So uh, taking out this level, to me, sells, set, tells me that this is a false break. If I go insert the shape just to kind of demonstrate the idea. The market pushed through the trend line, tried to make the new high, failed to do so, took out the low, and to me would indicate a move lower. However, sh one false break, but we hold the support, and then we actually do break 107.80, then it tells me that we can continue the progress up towards 109. So this upside move is stalling out at the moment. It's not over. But um, I think below 107.40, um, out of this little tight trading range that we're in, um, it starts to look a lot more doubtful. 107, the next level to look out for, of course. Uh, but below 107, uh, to me, tells me the, the momentum is to the downside for a retest of the lows. I, I, I guess what we can also deduce is that basically we were in a kind of down, downtrend. We've broken out, but we haven't turned into an outright uptrend this initial momentum to the top side is kind of petered out. We basically, it looks like we're going a bit sideways. If we get a break through the bottom, you know, we come and challenge these lows for a kind of sideways trend like that, or just right down to this low down here for a kind of wider range sideways action. Let's have a look at the Aussie. Another false breakout. Uh, let's remind ourselves of the daily situation. Um, big rally up from the lows. Uh, made a double top, rallied up through that, dolly, uh, through that double top, but only lasted a day, uh, and now we're back below it again. Uh, we're holding up 65 as a support, but this does look a bit dubious. We've made a new high, which is good, but it just didn't last very long. I mean, what you'd want is a big, powerful move to the top side and a pullback and a retest of that level. That's that's the kind of ideal scenario that you're looking for. And we're just not quite getting that at the moment. Um, in fact, we've made a little pretty measly move above the level and we've actually come back down and through the level. And it sort of looks like we're going to drift back into this trading range again. Um, of course, these are all these pairs are all fairly correlated. So if we, um, you know, if we are going to get that kind of shift up in the pound and in the euro, yeah, you'd imagine the same sort of thing is going to happen in the Aussie. Um, so if you are trying to capture that kind of upside push in the Aussie, we've got a bit of a kind of short-term downtrend. You know, we want to uh, push through that downtrend up through the prior high that we had as the important level, uh, and then it tells us, okay, we had this little temporary false break. Um, but now we're you know now we're back in business we're back above the line again uh, of course these 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 lines you know you draw the line but they're always kind of a zone and we have held the the round number so as I say it's not it's not all bets are off the fact that we're back below this line again but it's just it's not a very good indication of strength the market's kind of teetering a bit here um, and we're holding below the overbought level so a big break to the top side no overbought situation, no big m upside momentum evident, and we've rolled over a bit. Okay, let's move on to commodities. Now this is quite interesting, I think. Um, this is the gold four hour chart, and you can see that um, on the RSI, we've had a break below a fairly well-defined rising trend line. We rolled over. We've not hit oversold or anything, but the price is still relatively high. You know, we're still up relatively close to the peaks, um, to the seven year highs, in fact. Um, and price is holding on to its trend line. But this is one of those situations where potentially 
the RSI is giving us an early clue with the break lower of what's about to happen in the price. Um, doesn't mean to say that price break has to go too far, it could just go down to 1700. Um, another trend line to look out for here, which is a bit bit more messy, but if you I think if you use a maybe a closing price chart, let's see if we can uh, do that. If we move it on to uh, that's not altogether useful, but you know, for people who are just using lines, um, here here is a sort of like a, uh, a, a like a channel, if you like, which quite neatly connects these lows, little false break there, but otherwise connects these lows. And if we kind of zoom out a bit, you can sort of see that's the kind of thing that um, you know just about made a new high above here, just about made a new high above here. And it's kind of like this is our little rising uh, wedge. Uh, it could be a quite a big downdraft if we give up this trend line in 1700. So gold still positive for the moment, but there are some ominous signs coming in here that we could be in for a little bit of a breakdown. Um, so. Uh, consider this rise I think there are kind of a couple of opportunities here to consider this rising trend line as a kind of uh, last uh, line in the sand for for staying bullish in the short term and so once we get down towards that rising trend line you know um, however you want to do it if you want to wait for confirmation or if you want to just buy at the line you know that these are all possibilities if you think gold is still moving to the top side here. If we get the break through this short term trend line um, on the price chart, then it does go to confirm the RSI break that we've had. And so that might be an indication that uh, there's a little more downside to be had here, maybe even down to these pre previous highs down here at 1640. Let's move on to the oil market, and so um, I last week I'd had the I just pointed up the high up here, but you can sort of see that the price initially stalled there, and it basically did sort of close using that level. But then you, if you if you kind of ignore that price spike, that's kind of where the price ended. Um, so we, for for the time being, we've had a massive up move with very little in the way of retracement. Uh, we've come up to just shy of 35 and we've pulled back to the old peaks um, using you know spike there and close there or spike there and close there this is the kind of zone right so while we're above this zone um, I think you know yeah, the, the move certainly looks overdone but we've been in very extreme territory in oil we do remember the front month contract went negative in WTI, this very contract we're looking at. Um, this is now the spot price, which, which is based on the front month contract, but not completely representative. And um, so we're, we're above this area of resistance. While we remain so okay, we're, and, and above that thirty dollars a barrel mark, you know we can we can stay bullish. Um, but clearly, it's been a big move to the top side. Clearly, what came before it was negative. And this 35 um, before this big gap is the target that I've had as this bull move has been going on. I didn't think it would happen this quickly that we got to 35. Uh, but this has been a target of mine. And we've just come short of it. And uh, depending on what you want to make of this particular candle, it's potentially a hanging man pattern, uh, which is actually bearish. So it's rallied nicely off the lows off the previous resistance. And so, as I say, stay bullish for now, but just watch that pattern. A hanging man at highs um, are, you know, uh, can be a bearish pattern. So the confirmation of that pattern would be just a lower close today and particularly a close through the lows of the hanging man of Friday's close, basically, of uh, Friday's low. Right on to cryptocurrencies. This is looking pretty ominous, guys. Um, talked about this last week. So let's remind ourselves of the big picture. Um, the big 10,000 level, right? Um, we came up to it um, as we were pricing in the, the halving. The halving happened last week. Last week? 
sort of losing track of time now. Uh, the halving has happened, but we've not had the breakthrough 10,000. Okay, we still can, of course, um, but this price channel that I had drawn through here has broken. Uh, we retested the underside of the channel, and now we've broken the moving average as well, the 20 period moving average. So it's starting to look a little bit ominous here. So again, in terms of, it, you know, if you think this break maybe has legs, um, and if you think this little retouch of the trend line um, is as high as we're getting for the time being, and we're about to roll over, then obviously you're measuring your risk up to that peak. If you're taking a slightly longer term approach and you think, okay, um, maybe we can retest uh, these recent sets of highs, then maybe you want to expect a little push through that level, but maybe we, we struggle somewhere in this zone. If we get, if people are buying the dips still, then maybe we get a rally up into this zone, and that's really when this uh, broken channel um, pays its dividends and we roll over. So. Uh, 7,500 would be the, the one for me. That's the top of this level through here. And it would also be roughly, depending on how fast we get there, um, this broken down sloping channel. Um, I like the lows through here. Uh, the top is less meaningful, but um, it, there would be something to be had for it. Um, maybe there, depending on, it depends how you draw this channel. You can draw it through there. You can see that it kind of, this whole section sort of remains above it. Um, 